ready to win an election, is that right? We want to say to the rest of the country, welcome to the new Georgia, welcome to the blue Georgia. Georgia, they didn't see you coming. But here we are. And here she is in just a little while, Madam Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. I like the sound of that. You flip this state blue. And come January 5th, when you send me and John Ossoff to the United States Senate, we're going to seal the deal. So make sure that we keep this momentum going all the way to January 5th. Don't let up for one bit. January 5th is election day, but let me tell you, we should no longer be talking about election day. There's no such thing. It's election season. We can't wait until, until January 5th. Anything could happen. Ice storm in Georgia, you know we're in trouble. And so start voting now. During this early voting period that goes through December 31st, Make voting part of your holiday plan. Don't wait. There's too much at stake. Because the four most powerful words ever uttered in a democracy are the people have spoken. And on November 3rd, you spoke loud and clear. And you sent Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to the White House with Georgia's 16 electoral votes. We know they won because we counted them. <laughs> and then we counted them again. And then we counted them again. Can there be any doubt that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are the president and vice president-elect of the United States of America? But they will need help. And that's what this moment is all about. That you would send John Ossoff and myself, that you would give us the great honor of representing the people of the greatest state in the union, the state of Georgia, the home state of Martin Luther King, Jr., in whose pulpit I'm honored to preach from every Sunday. As pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, spiritual home of Dr. King and the great John Lewis, who would be telling us right now, vote like you've never voted before. And I'm honored just to be a part of this effort. I really am. Because no matter whatever I've been able to achieve, I I've never forgotten where I came from. I was raised in public housing. One of 12 children in my family, I'm number 11. 12 kids, my folks are preachers and they clearly read the Bible, be fruitful and multiply. I'm the first graduate of a four-year institution in my family. Morehouse College. I got there through hard work, grit, and determination. But I got there because somebody gave me some Pell Grants and some low-interest student loans. And I'm running because it's harder now for kids growing up in struggling families than it was for me all of those years ago. But when you look at me, you see an iteration and an example of the American story. Because I grew up in public housing. 
My mama's from way across Georgia. That's way across Georgia. She grew up in the, in the 1950s, and as a black teenager, she spent many summers picking somebody else's cotton. She spent many days picking somebody else's tobacco. But the other day, those 82-year-old hands that used to pick somebody else's cotton picked her youngest son to be a next United States Senator from the great state of Georgia. And that's what I like about America. I love America because it is a great country that gives us the path to make it greater. And the way we make it greater is for the people to stand up. We're the only ones who can. This is our democracy. It doesn't belong to the politicians. It belongs to the people they serve at our pleasure. And so I'm deeply honored. The stakes of this election cannot be overstated. We've got to pass COVID-19 relief. We've got to make sure that workers are at the center of any relief that we provide. We've got to protect ordinary people. We've got to look out for our frontline workers, for our health care workers, for our police officers and our fire men and fire women. We've got to look out for those who put it all on the line for us, who risk their lives by saving lives every day. We've got to get this vaccine distributed safely and efficiently. We've got to make sure that communities of color and other marginalized communities don't find themselves at the back of the line. We've got to stand up for our essential workers. Isn't it interesting? The folk that we have too often ignored, refused to pay a livable wage. This pandemic has reminded us of how important they really are. The folk who stock grocery store shelves in the middle of the night while many of us are asleep. The folk who keep the economy humming, we now call them essential workers. Well, if they are essential workers, and indeed they are, we ought to pay them an essential wage, provide for them essential benefits. It's only right. And we have to strengthen the Affordable Health Care Act. And make sure we cover everybody. I believe that health care is a human right. And it is certainly something that the wealthiest nation on the planet can and ought to provide for all of its citizens. We can do it. We just have to commit to doing it. I've been moving all across this state, dropping by little towns. And when I go into these small rural towns, they're surprised that I'm there. I'm surprised that they're surprised. They say, Reverend, we're not used to someone running for the Senate coming by our little town. And that's strange to me because I'm running to be a United States Senator for the whole state of Georgia. 